What's happening, everybody? Rory here with Subdivision.com, bringing you the first in a series of workflow on the go tips. In this particular video, we're going to cover how to use Live's Beat Warp Mode and then use the preserve settings to add some unique flavor and variation to audio clips. Uh, we'll also explore how to tighten the decay on audio clips, and uh, this will improve clarity and help them fit better in your mix. Often you hear producers refer to the different warp modes when talking about warping tracks or warping audio clips for remixing. But in this video, we are going to use the Beats Warp Mode and the Preserve settings for sound design. Ableton Live offers six different warp modes for time stretching audio. Um, each of the modes are associated with the parameters that can be adjusted right here in the clip's sample box. Um, these modes use granular synthesis and algorithms to control time stretching and pitch shifting of each clip. So basically, these algorithms break the audio up into tiny sections before resampling them. Um, using these associated parameters here, uh, with each mode, you can adjust these small sections of samples, uh, which are often referred to as grains, and this can achieve uh, time compression and expansion to um, come up with some unique sounds. So essentially, you can control how live repeats and skips over parts of these samples during playback. Um, each of the six warp modes also produce a different result because they handle the selection of grains differently. Uh, for example, you know, they will handle the overlapping and crossfading between the grains during playback. Let's explore the beats mode a bit further and put some of these techniques to practice. Um, the beats mode uses a type of granular synthesis that uh, preserves the transients in a selected beat division of an audio clip. Using the preserve settings here, we can choose a beat division for the transients that uh, live will preserve during playback. For example, when choosing a quarter note beat, uh, the transients will be preserved or uh, unaffected at each quarter note, while the audio between each quarter note will change according to the controls set here um, below in the preserve settings. So looking below the preserve control box here, um, you can see the other two options. The transient loop mode chooser uh, to the left here is used to set the looping properties for each of the clip's transients. And then while the Transient envelope slider to the right here is used to apply volume fades to each division of audio. So for example, at 100, uh, there's no fade, and then at zero, the audio will decay quickly after each transient. I will manually draw in the, uh, the volume fades here to show you guys what the envelope slider is actually doing. But first, let's change our beat grid to quarter notes. All right, and then at each quarter note, the transient, also known as the note onset, um, is actual is the initial attack of the sound. So when adjusting the transient envelope here to decay the volume like so, it will happen after the note onset. Therefore, it'll preserve um, the transient's pitch and volume. So I'm going to go over here in the envelope editor, and I'm going to draw in the uh, fades manually to show you guys what the envelope slider is doing. So when the slider is at zero, you, the fade's going to be uh, real quick, real fast. Then I'll bring it back up to 100 to remove the fade completely. Let's investigate this further. Uh, the first mode is the loop off mode. Uh, this tells Live to play the audio between transients to the end of the envelope setting and then stop. What this means is the audio will play back the length specified here in the envelope slider and then it'll stop before reaching the next transient. So, for example, a short envelope will result in a very fast decay and that will leave silence before reaching the next transient. Um, the next mode is the loop forward mode. Uh, this mode tells Live to play the audio between transients to the very end of the envelope setting, and then it'll jump back to a zero crossing near the middle of the beat division here, and then it'll continue looping until the time when the next transient occurs. So let's hear what this sounds like. 
But first I'm going to transpose the audio up 12 semitones just to exaggerate this effect and uh, we'll be able to hear it much more clear. All right, pretty cool. Has some uh, some pretty unique uh, effects going on here. The last mode is called loop back and forth. Uh, this mode controls the audio between transients by playing to the end of the envelope, and then it'll reverse until it reaches a zero crossing near the middle of the beat division, and then it'll play for it again. Um, this pattern will continue until the time when the next transient occurs. So let's hear what this sounds like. I really like how this mode introduces some uh, some pretty interesting uh, rhythmic artifacts. To sum it all up, you can use these settings to control the decay at specified beat divisions. Um, this will give us accurate control of where we want our phase to start and end. Um, in addition, we can use these settings for sound design to introduce some pretty cool, interesting, you know, rhythmic artifacts and uh, kind of give these loops a unique flavor. I particularly like using the loop off mode and then adjusting the transient envelope slider, um, especially on percussion loops, to tighten them up and allow them to cut through the mix a little bit better. Let's hear what this sounds like. But first I'm going to select our tops track, solo it, and then I'm going to choose the clip so we can see the waveform. And then I'm going to go down and choose our beats warp mode. Then we're going to choose transients. Then select our loop off mode. This mode could also be handy for removing pops and clicks at the end of loops. Um, sometimes when you're playing back a clip and the playhead reaches the end of the loop, um, you'll hear like a pop or click because the waveform um, isn't at a zero crossing. It's being cut off. So uh, adjusting the envelope slider here will help remove some of those pops and clicks. Um, you can also use this function as, a, as a, an effect you know, to apply some rhythmic gating. There's another interesting feature available when working with warp modes, and it can be found right over here in the envelopes box. Um, it's called the sample offset modulation, and uh, it can be chosen from the uh, drop down menu right here. And essentially, this feature allows us to modulate the play position of the sample. So, for example, um, drawing in positive values like this will tell Live to play the sample ahead in time while negative values will delay the play position of the sample. So let's put this function to the test.
Again, some pretty cool sound manipulation happening here. All right, so that wraps it up for using Beast Mode to add unique textures to our audio clips, as well as uh, how to use the loop off mode as a mixing tool to help us tighten up percussion loops and improve clarity so that the sounds can cut through the mix a bit better. Um, you know, I encourage you guys to uh, go out and experiment with these settings, and you know, it, it may help inspire ideas for your next tune. You never know. I hope you have found these tips helpful, and if anything remains unclear, please feel free to ask questions in the comments box below. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.